copy that I'm going to be uploading as well. So just uh, just to bring you up to speed again, this is um, a helmet I chose, and the biggest question is about how do you actually build these larger domed light profiles? It's not a quick process. You can't just click a button and boom, perfect dome. Um, I'm showing you the way that I've gone about these things before. Um, the most common, most common one for me, and where I've used this, is when I rebuild the Iron Man armor for some of the outreach events. Um, I use these these key methods of doing it. So this is a blueprint of just a just a random helmet I found online. It's not an American football helmet or any uh, real usable body armor. So that's why I'm a bit I'm fairly secure to be able to record this and show you these uh, sneaky profiles. So, on these key profiles here, um, what I've done is I've tracked this line all the way around. I mean, really, really, if you look there where I've taken that line, I should have really ended here. But it doesn't matter for this because I'm just going to show you the key method for what I do. Right. <coughs> so, what I'm going to do, what I did is on... I made two sketches one of the edge and one of the uh, rounded edge here I then use my projected curve to create this curve to go through and now all I've done is use 3d sketch to create me this overall profile here now what I really want to do now if I want to try and build a dome like profile what I really want to do now is start to look at constraint curves I know it's just a line and I've had students say before, well, it's just a profile. Can you really go that far with it? And you really can. So what I'm going to do is just come back onto my normal three-point curve. If you are a, an avid user of splines, please don't think I'm criticizing you by using them. Because um, I think, yeah, if I just never have the biggest look. Like you will have seen on that spline that I just did on the helmet profile then. You look and go, hmm. It's a bit crap, isn't it? That? It is a bit crap. Um, you see there, this is me fudging just because I should have really ended there. But to show you the profile I'm going to try and create, uh, this demonstration works really well. So I've gone tangent, make it nice, nice and smooth. Uh, on there, and then on there, make that tangent as well. Oh, problem. We like problems. No, no, we don't. Um, let's see if that'll do it. Is that going to do it? I think it's still going to uh, not be very nice to me, as ever. Oh, not bad, not bad. Surpri surprised. <laughs> right, so what I'll do first is, as I've done before, go back to my sketches, turn them off, and there we've got like a rounded profile, something, something I can operate with. Now, there's really, really, really cheeky, sneaky bastard ways of doing this. And everybody likes a sneaky, cheeky bastard way of doing stuff. So, um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go boundary. Now, boundaries, this is where boundaries, you kind of go, Oh, boundary, where have you been all my life? Oh, no, look at that. Oh, no. That is a spine. That's come in because I'm missing. Oh, look at that. Oh, I didn't actually see that. That's where it, it's, it's actually not been on the plane and projected completely. Oh, it's okay. I can fix that. Hell, it's what we do. Am I right? So, um, I could do the same thing over here. So, in fact, in fact, just to be complete, better do the same thing. So, I'm going to go back here and here. Let's turn these on and let's just take a quick look at what went wrong. <sighs> Always makes me smile. Uh, let's go from the front. Let's turn you off. And then let's take a look at... Oh, that's what it is. Look there. It's just underneath the line. <laughs> right, so I'm going to edit that, and what I'm going to, what I really want to do now is just try and pop it out. 
I know, I know, I can feel the fudge factor right now. If I click OK, <laughs> if I click OK and turn it back on, oh, it's gone. Uh, so if I turn that back on, let's go to show. You got that? Oh, look at that! It's it's actually on the it's it's where it needs to be. <laughs> I know, I know, it's a bit fudge, but the important thing in this case, it works. Right, so I've now fudged them two lines. Uh, we've now got that connection. Let's have another board boundary. So from this, I've got two sketches on here. Now this is the stupid powerful uh, thing about 3D sketches. Now um, 3D sketches hold so much geometry, so so much geometry. And you often, I mean, I always, not often, I always forget how much opportunity and, and option these things actually have. So I'm going to go group. So I'm going to go you and you. And then go, okay. Cut that, right? Right. And, and uh, if you're following me, you'll know exactly where I'm going with this. So I go right click, selection manager, bring you in. And I like to just get that curve started. That might be a very poor mistake. Well, I mean, look at that for a distance. No, I'll drop that out. And then click OK on that. Then what it does is says, I can do that for you. Then I go direction, right click, selection manager. I'm going to use this point, this point, this point, and this point. Beauty is with a 3D sketch, don't need to see if they're connected. They're one sketch. That's, that's it. That's the beauty of it. So I click OK. And then we kind of go, OK. It's roughly what we wanted. Now I'll go right click, selection manager. I'm going to bring this in, this in, and this in as one profile. Now, this is where we find out if the sketch is connected like I wanted it to be. Um, knowing my look, it won't be. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Hell. Now, that I'm pleased with. Now, these entities have come about like this because of the sketch itself. We can smooth that out. Um, but as an overall piece, that is a very good start. I'm very pleased with that. So let's have a look at the curvature combs. Curvature combs will just give you an overall spike of where something's um, heavily curved and where it is not. So if I just turn the curvature combs back off and then... Um, yeah, because it's actually mapping nicely. So, so if I map that... And then you kind of sit there and go, well, it, it is one piece. So let's go mirror that across to there like that. And then let's go to my features. I'm going to go mirror. And now we don't want to go um, um, solids. We want to go bodies. I'm going to go this body. Then look at this beneath. I love this. love this so much. Uh, look here. Knit surfaces, merge surfaces. I'm... I'm I'm just going to knit my surfaces, do it for me. Now, that's a start. Um, any of you who have looked so far, you probably look and think, that is a bit naff, not happy with that. However, however, this isn't the end. So if I just go back to here and go show, if I can go show you swine. There you go. Right. You look here, you can actually see instantly what it is that we're starting to miss. Well, can you though? You can't really. That's just because it's cutting through the helmet itself. So let's go from the side. Again, if you have just joined us, all this is, is I've had a question this week about building up the body armor, building up helmets, things like that. So what I thought I would do is record a session where all I'm doing is taking the helmet profile and I'm trying to extract curves, geometry. In this in this place, in this in this example, it's just a visor. Um, but if I make a transparent, you can see there we've got that nice contour. The profile's moving like we want it to. It's a good start. I'm quite happy with that. However, if I come to the front, you look here, and it's getting this spike here. Not a happy bunny with that one. Now, the real question is, is, where is that coming from? Why is that appearing like that? So, um, we've got this really aggressive angle here. 
and that aggressive angle is what's giving it almost like a Mohican. So what I'll do is go back, go back to here, and I mean, don't get me wrong, as a start, as a start, it's not so bad, it isn't so bad, but it needs to be uh, tangential to here. When it's hitting this point here, it needs to be tangent. And um, that's what I need to do. I need to try and put in a curve now, which will force this point to be tangent. And then what I'm going to do again is rebuild it and see what happens. So I'm going to go back and delete that. And I'm going to delete that. Then I'm going to drop back out, uh, get rid of my sketches. These sketches at this point are not needed. So, um, this point here was a suspect of that needed uh, some tangents put into it. Um, it's hard to tell where that edge is coming from. I suspect it's actually coming from, let's go to the top. I suspect it's actually coming from here, down here. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to force these these to actually meet each other correctly. So a um, few ways we can go three point arc on a 3D sketch where we just click the two together, get it to nicely move. Not a problem with that. If you're not confident with uh, three point arcs, if you, I mean if you're not confident with 3D sketching, totally get that. It is a bit like a oh what do you mean three components? It's weird. So. What I'm going to do is do it the going to do it the conventional way. So let's use this now. I can either try to use these points as tilt points. So if I go plane from there, what I want to use, I want to use that, and I want to see if I can use that, and that gives me a tilt point to operate to. Now you'll see there it's been tilted perpendicular. It's a little bit bloody annoying, is that? But what I can do is go on to there, I can actually tilt that if I wanted to. So, um, can I put you in at an angle? Let's go, uh, let's go 180. Zero. Oh, it's never happy when I do that, ever. Okay, so let's try and see if we can flip you up manually. Probably not a bad step, not a bad shot actually, because then I can draw a linear straight onto that and actually draw my curve straight onto it. Uh, so I'll put a sketch on there. Going to do a three-point arc there to there, and let's right. So um, a common way that a few people have come across before, they kind of go, well, how do I get that to be tangent to its counterpart? few ways of doing it there's always a few ways of doing it uh if i select this edge then click uh convert the entities as ever you end up with a line if i then make that construction so it's ignored from everything else and what i'm really wanting to do is to figure out oh, it's not going to work as well as i thought hoped actually because this is on an edge that's a swine okay okay so let's try and go perpendicular to that key point here. And then all I'm going to do is just ensure that this line and this line remain tangent. So on that line, let's make sure they're going to be tangent. And they are tangent. And um, let's come back to that. Get rid of this plane. And again, for anybody who's, who's, who has just joined us, what we're doing is I'm just trying to build a nice, smooth profile which doesn't move to that point. Because anybody knows, because I actually think this is the Daft Punk helmet. Let me just double check. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I, I'm just looking now. So that's your, daft, your two Daft Punk helmets. Yes, it is. You look at that. That is so the Daft Punk helmet. Okay, that's quite good because now I can look and really look 
uh, it is very smooth as it comes down when you actually see it there it's very smooth as it comes down that's quite useful it's spinning around actually so at least then we know now how that thing would look so um, what I'm going to do again surface go boundary and use this point this point as a profile going to use this point as another profile as ever it's going to flip so I just need to flip them connectors right click selection manager click on to my final profile click that and again it's flipped around so I'm just going to flip now what I'm going to do is bring in my constraint curve so selection manager uh, my point two point two point click OK flips that out you look now we're starting to get this bubble like function which is nice um it does tell us a lot though so if i come back bring you in bring you in bring you in and bring you in click ok and right so the best way to see this is to flip it out you look there it's it's a bit better so we're going to concentrate on the top so again, let's go to the right plane. And I'm gonna go, damn it, I've lost it, there it is. I'm gonna go mirror. I'm gonna come to the bodies, mirror that body across, knit them entities, click OK. And we're starting to get that nice tangent, but oh, 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 look at what you could have won. Oh, 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 oh that's a swine. So uh, now what this is, is it's probably actually coming from this profile here. Because you look, it just stretches out and pops out. So this is quite good, though. All we all we do now, repeat the process once more. Um, <laughs> the other thing I should tell you is, I didn't practice this. I, I literally just found this picture just before um, I opened up the class, just because um, I thought, let's do something custom. So at least then you know that um, it is a genuine way of how I would approach this because I didn't want you to feel a bit bullshitted. So, uh, let's come back again. Go top, whoop, whoop, top line. I'm going to come into here, go sketch, sketch, and I'm going to make it, let's make it you, and let's make it you. I mean, really, I could actually use the top plane looking at that. I don't even know why I'm doing that. Look at that top plane. That top plane's not too bad at all. I'm going to use my favorite tool in the world, three point arc. If I can figure out where I'm looking, that's where I'm looking, looking straight down. Silly self. So I'll go three point arc, bring this three point arc across. That's a pentagon. Three point arc, you know, three point arc across. And as ever, profile. Whoops. Point profile pierce. Lots of P's. Point profile pierce. Boom. <laughs> so um, then all I need to do, do that constraint. Bring you out. Let's get you just on the right spot like that. And um, I'm only just doing it just because it allows me to make sure that um, you look there. Mm, not convinced. Not convinced, but when you see it come downwards, you kind of go, hmm, I think we, we might need to add perhaps two onto there, or a, a, a spline of two points, just to give it that curve. So I'll come back, and then if I go surfaces, boundary. And again, this is such a repetitive process, and it is all about searching for the ideal curve, and it... It sounds really cheesy, but it genuinely is about searching for that ideal curve, getting that profile that you're after. And uh, this process here, what I'm doing, is actually what I'm marking you on, on the assignment. I'm marking you on the process of how you attack it. How are you getting that curve that you're after? Um, because it's, it's never straightforward. I click on there and again onto here, there, to there, to there, to there. Let's click OK. Now you see that I've got a twist there. That's pro probably because my curve here is too aggressive, but let's take a look. 
It is. It is. You see there where I've, I've forced it out? It bubbles out, then bubbles back in. So all I need to do there is readdress that curve again. But once I start to look, once you start to look at this um, in the feature, so if I go feature again, so I'll go to my right plane. I'm going to go bodies to mirror. I'm not going to knit it this time just because I want to I want to do something myself. So my surfaces, I'm going to knit you and you, and I'm going to merge the entities. I just like to get rid of that blue line. And you look and you kind of go, if I just bring pictures back in, so I'll show. If I bring um, the actual image back in, so you look at the, the, the profile of this helmet, the way it looks. Starting to take the right approach. So let's just drop off there. It's that bubble. But you look here, I've actually really captured that quite nicely. But that bubble there just tells me it needs a just needs perhaps not one three point arm, but two. And that would probably solve that. And uh, but that is how you actually start helmets in SolidWorks. Well, I say in SolidWorks, Inventor, SolidWorks. No, they're all the same, exactly the same approach. Um, uh, just before I, I switch over to Inventor to show you this alternate way of approaching it, is there any burning question? Um, two seconds, just minimizing. Yeah, I'm just going to switch on uh, Inventor and then we can jump across that way. Just just so I've got an overall between the two. <clears throat> so we're into the Inventor format. So let's go on Part. Oh, good question. Right, um, two seconds. Let me just hit pause on this. Right, so um, attacking the same problem from Inventor is, is, to be honest, the same way. So a lot of people do like to prefer the, the uh, planes to be named front side. Now, one quick way, if you look from the front view and if you click on your planes, XY, for example, it tells you that you're looking from what would be the front view. So using that, that method of approach, I'll do the same thing. So I'll go sketch. I'm going to go image. So to here, we'll go front. Open. And snap out of there like that and then confirm so then I'll come from the side sketch image side open that's a swipe it's actually move like I didn't um, didn't think it would, so I'm just going to use that, and I'm going to use my point, snap it around, so that's how I want it. Done, and then I'm going to go move you, and move it from this midpoint. If it's going to let me, obviously not, because it's a swine. I'll put it into something like that. And then uh, pop that out a little bit. Let's just take a look. And what I'll perhaps do is I'm going to move that to its midpoint because um, that's one thing I just realized. On my first sketch, when I put that in there, that position is um, not the best position for it to be in. So I'm going to move that. This on this point, and I'll just take it roughly to the center. I could measure this out and mark it out that way, but I, I roughly know what I'm going to do. So, um, can I 
perhaps a little bit more. If you look at that, it, it is still out of profile. So all I'll do now is, I'm probably going to do the, the thing that I didn't do on the last one. So I'll come on to my uh, YZ plane. Uh, I didn't really end up using the other sketch. So what I'll do in this case is I'll just construct from um, this particular edge. Fine. Use my key splines. There. To there. To there. No, I didn't line up. And what you should be really starting to notice, I don't know who's been following me on both of these. I know some have actually been doing both just to try and get an experience around both. Um, what you should really start to be realizing is it actually doesn't really matter what system you use. They all operate under the same kernel. And because they all operate under the same kernel, what you actually end up with is just a, a universal way that all CAD systems will talk to each other. And so they're all built on the same method. And building something on the same method means that when you're using a CAD system, it's not about using the tool. It is just simply, is it, um, hold on a second, let me just double check this. Yeah, when you're using a CAD system, it all it actually is, is it's, um, is it, I get myself massively over concentrating here. Where are the tools? That's all it is. Where do you find the tools? Because the procedure and the setup is your technique, nothing more. So when you talk about when uh, people say to you, oh, well, this CAD system is better than this, and, well, they're all built in a very similar format. So yes, there may be tools which are offered in a CAD system, but 99.9% .9 of the time, they're all built on the same construct. And with them being built on the same construct, it means that all you really need to know is how to use the tool for an application. That's it. You just need to learn where the tools are and that's what makes all the difference. Right, so nearly getting there. Apologies, putting these lines in piece by piece can be a huge pain in the backside sometimes, but it is so worth it. So I'll bring this down, take it right up to the edge here, something like that. Uh, granted, when you're lucky, you kind of go, that edge is a bit crap. It is a little bit crap. Could be better. <sighs> Interestingly, it's the exact same edge that I was having problems with on uh, on SolidWorks. Uh, oh, I hate dodgy edges. I hate dodgy edges. So now all I'm going to do is. Um, Come on to where is my projections sketches? Let me just go here. First, let me edit onto that sketch, and then um, I'm going to create a 3D sketch. Oh, in fact, it's going to have to be done in the 3D sketch mode. So I'll do it in 3D sketch mode. I'm going to do intersections between this sketch and this sketch. Click OK to give me that sketch. Um, you can see there instantly that I just cocked that up quite a bit. And uh, if I spin that round a little bit, 
moves into the right direction. It actually plucks out a little bit too much on there. So that's just showing misalignment in what I've done. Um, but you should really start to see the process between the two, as I've said before, is absolutely identical. The uh, process from this now is just a repeat of exactly what I've just done on SolidWorks. But all only thing that's different there is you just gradually build it up. Um, so I'll come back. Again, if there are any questions that are going through, please interrupt me. I'm more than happy to help you on whatever. If you've got any uh, assignment issues, anything like that, please do let me know. Um, so if I come from the front, you look there, you can see it. I've actually gone too far with the line. So if I come back up to my line here, and then edit the sketch. Just for argument's sake, let's go on to, I'm going to take some geometry from that point, and then click to front. Ah, you look there, you can actually see how far I'm out. I am miles out. So there. So one thing I really like with this, if I click it, what it will do is it will try to move everything proportionally to make sure it meets. And that's really cool. Really like that. So we look now, we're a little bit closer but still got that inconsistency across it. So I'm just going to turn my sketches off because it's not the sketches themselves. It's something I've done. So um, finding it is the bigger. Ah, I wonder if that is to do with, it is, look, see how that line comes in? it actually goes just beneath the point of projection. So as much as it's completed, it's actually not completed. So if I come in and just bring that up slightly like that. Click OK. <laughs> oh, you shizer. So if I come back on here again, I'm going to edit that in. Bring it up a little bit more like that. You and you definitely need to be tangent. Let's click OK. And there it is. So I'm going to turn them there. And what I'll do is I'm going to just turn them off to just see what I've got. And that's it. So there is my um, first profile. And if you remember, all I did on the last one was I simply went onto my plane and uh, wow this gets really confusing after a while there we go so I went onto my plane and I can go from my uh, uh, YZ I think it is it is YZ now what's important is if I spin it just to make sure I'm gonna have some connection which I am which is incredible, which is great. Or I can just simply go on 3D Sketch and um, turning on my right image, so I'll make that visible. And what I'm gonna do is just look from here and I'm gonna add a three point arc from there to there. Three point arc there to there. Now, uh, arguably, a lot of these systems all can do three point arcs, all can do 3D sketches. Some hold 3D sketches better than the others. So you look at that, that is a 3D sketch, and because I was looking from the side, what the system did is went, oh, he's looking from the side. That's obviously what he wants. And this is one of the things where, for me, invented us so well. It's just mint and stuff like that. So let's have a go at building this up. And this is going to be tricky because you look here, I've not got much to work with. So let's see what it can offer me.
What about a boundary? So I choose there. I'm going to choose that. You kind of go, no. Is that it? Amazingly, ladies and gents. <laughs> Let me just go view. Let's go. That is the first process. That is what we were doing. Um, for completion, let's mirror it across. Let's see if it's something that we can operate with. So, because I put a three-point arc on there, I've drawn that sketch. On. I'm going to add a plane onto it because you can. You just want to be sure, you know. So I'm going to let me think. Where's my good one here? I'll put it on. Can I choose you as an edge? No, of course I can't because that would be far too simple. Okay, let's try a point for parallel of you. And you. Oh, that's mint as well. Why is it playing? If you look there, it's, it, I think it's actually slightly out, isn't it? It is slightly out. <sighs> that's a bummer. That is a bummer. So I'm going to, again, just remove that out. And then um, come in and go. <laughs> I'll go three points. You, you, and you. And there's my uh, curve. So let me just mirror that across and let's take a look. Mirror this feature by this plan. You can actually go the the the, the origins, but um, it's just slightly off the origin. So then we look there, if I close that, let's just hide that for the moment. If you look there, that's the exact same problem that we had, if you remember. Side image, bang on. Top image, oh, we look there. I mean, I could really fix that because that's because the tangential marker hasn't worked right. Um, I could really fix that because that's just to do with the sketch. But that gets you to the first initial stage of where we were looking um, on on SolidWorks. So um, I'll just stop recording there.